Welcome back. Uh, thank you, Kathy Rosser, with another question. She had a question about uh, number six on page 33, part C, about triangular numbers. The question reads, write a formula for the number of dots in the nth triangular number. So let's take a look at some of the triangular numbers that we see. Here we have the first triangular number, which is one. The second triangular number, which is two plus one. Then we have the third triangular number, which is three. You can see the three here plus two here, plus one. So in each case, so now we add three plus two plus one, and we get six, and if we do two plus one, we get three. So here is the fourth triangular number, and as you can imagine, it's four plus three plus two plus one, and we get 10. So that's how the triangular numbers go. Our job is to write a formula for the number of dots in the nth triangular number. So in order to do this, we want to start with um, an example that would be really hard to do without just adding them up. So let's just uh, try for the 100th, 100th triangular number. So if we do that, uh, actually there was a student in, in the fourth grade, his name was Carl Frederick Gauss, and his teacher challenged him to write the sums of all the numbers from 1 to 100. And he was pretty ingenious because he, um, he said, well, if we have 100 and then we have 99 going down and then we have 98, eventually we'll get down to 3 and 2 and 1. So what he did was he paired these up. So in going backwards, if this is the 100th number and we're summing all of these, he paired up the 100 with the 1 and that would be 101. Then he paired up the 99 with the 2, also 101. And then he paired up the 98 with the 3, 101. So as he continued to do this, he realized that if he added the highest and the lowest number going in, he would always get 101. And how many times would he have to do this if he wanted to get the sum of the first 100 numbers? How many times do you think he would have to do that? Well, he calculated that it would be 50 times he would have to do that. So if he had 50 101s, he would have 50 times 101. So if we go back to our original question about the 100th number, and we look at how can we write a formula for the number of dots in the nth triangular number, if that would be equal to n, how would we represent it? So in this case, we would have uh, 50. Okay, well, let's, let's suppose that we don't use 50, and instead of uh, 50, we write 100, which is 50 times 2 is 100, and we call that n. Okay, if that is n, which it is in this case, what, uh, what can we use for 101? If n is 100, what is 101 in terms of n? Well, 101 would be n plus 1. So he noticed if you multiply n times n plus 1, but in this case we only need 50, so we only need half, so that would be n divided by 2. 50 would be n divided by 2 because 100 divided by 2 is 50. So now we're going to multiply n divided by 2 times n plus 1. So here we get the formula for the nth number in the series. We have n divided by 2 times n plus 1. And when we write that, we can write it differently. We could put n 
times n plus 1 divided by 2. Now, to see if this formula works, this is our formula for the nth number, thanks to fourth grader Carl Frederick Gauss. Let's see if it works. Here we have 21. 21 is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth triangular number. And it should be 21. Let's, let's see if we get 21. So in each case, we're going to plug in 6 for n. So we have 6 times 6 plus 1 divided by 2. And 6 plus 1 is 7. So we get a 6 times 7 divided by 2. So now we can uh, reduce and make this into a 1. And this becomes a 3 right here because 6 over 2 is the same as 3 over 1. And then we do 7 times 3 and we get 21. So yes, it does work. And if you try it out in every case, it will work. Let's go back to the question. Write a formula for the number of dots in the nth triangular number. And that's what we did. And thank you, Kathy Rosser, for your question. And thank you, Erica, for videotaping. See you next time.